I heard on a podcast just the other week that there are estimated four, 546 million podcast listeners worldwide. So we really should get some more, I think. Well, yeah. we're not doing bad. A fifth of those, are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's also estimated that, That's maths. <laughs> uh, that this year it will be spent f- $4 billion on ads on podcasts. So we really should get some of those as well. Yeah, we need some of those. <laughs> Definitely need some of yeah. those. Don't know I, how. I, I've but... heard a lot of podcasts, and there are a lot of shitty ones out there. So I'm thinking, I mean, we are, we are in the top half. I mean, we are above average <laughs> from, from oh, what are I we? <laughs> <laughs> In my mind, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if we count all the podcasts in the world, I'm pretty sure that we're not in the, in the bottom, at least. We're somewhere, at least somewhere in the middle. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, there are, there are some that are very, very much better produced and more interesting and better looking people than us as well. So, yeah. Oh, we're not at the top. <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it should be a list out there of podcasts. That, I mean, we should have enough data to compile and extrapolate uh, to just estimate or even ballpark our uh, position on that list. Are we at the center or plus minus? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're not going by uh, subscribers at least or listeners because then we, we are definitely going to be... Uh, then again, if it's exponential, I'm thinking most of the listeners are at uh, the top X percentages of uh, the podcast out there. Yeah. But I mean, if you see on all the topics and what's being spoken about that Joe Rogan's podcast and all the people and millions he's pulling in, we, we should be able to get a, a, a bigger piece of that pie. I mean... <laughs> I have never listened to him, so I don't know. Does he no scream either. a lot? or No, I, I haven't listened to an episode myself. I've just seen small clips on Instagram <laughs> or whatnot. And uh, yeah, it's, it's there's some dubious guests and some... Uh, we, we have got those. Low, 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 quali- <laughs> low, low quality topics. And yeah, we got yep, those. That, that's well. <laughs> KJ's recently got me onto the uh, Regular Features uh, podcast, which I just love. That thing has weird hysterics. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's nice. A nice <laughs> comedy podcast, but they, it's just a, an outlet for their weird ideas, more or less. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's... it's Sounds yeah. oddly familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I did stumble yeah. over the, the Road to Success one that you talked about. Oh, uh, that's good previously and I, I haven't finished that episode uh, so yeah but I did see the other episode and <laughs> they don't interest me so I think it's going to be this no. one <laughs> yeah yeah no that was a good that was a really good uh, interview with Colin Furs I enjoyed that yeah he seems uh, he, I mean sometimes when you listen to <laughs> interviews with people you kind of lose interest in them but I only felt more that's yeah, I would I'd probably like hanging out with him. He seems like a nice <laughs> <laughs> nice guy with with similar uh yeah, similar ideas or similar uh way of think way of looking at life. So, I think I would maybe would enjoy it. <laughs> if only I lived close to him. <laughs> <laughs> only yeah. 20 minutes away. <laughs> Yeah, why don't I have a multi-million following YouTuber living just next door? I okay, feel left then, out. So, <laughs> so here's the scenario then, KJ. You've got Colin first living 20 uh, minutes away from you. Are you going to contact him and see if he can go over? I would be. <laughs> I mean, when you're laying, a, laying in bed and not able to fall asleep, that would be one of the scenarios playing <laughs> Do out. Do you want to go here? <laughs> <laughs> so, hmm, I wonder what shops he goes to. I maybe I should start shopping there as well. And <laughs> but yeah. I mean, you don't want to to be found out to be a stalker. Uh, that that's probably not a good good thing. 
just That's find out what thing. hardware stores and they use and that you sort should, of thing. You just just go up to the door and hit the doorbell and uh, oh, I'm <laughs> doing a project and do you have a screwdriver or something? I just uh, I'm, I'm I'm lost for tools and then <laughs> build a crazy project that will fall apart just outside on the <laughs> yeah. road. Oh damn it! I need oh no. <laughs> do you have a Torx bit? I need to fix this thing. I made this uh, bicycle, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I think he gets all his hardware delivered. It's uh, I've never seen anything from the our big box stores in his workshop. Mm. I mean, he has a lot of Ryobi. You get that at the big box store, don't you? Uh, maybe. But yeah. I think he got it delivered, yes, because I think he got a brand deal at some point. But <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I like to see. Though I haven't stumbled over them yet, but I, I see Nerdforge are. Uh, frequenting the same stores as I do. But of course, being a full-time YouTuber, they do it as a part of their job. So they're just in and out early in the morning because they need supplies for a project while I'm uh, the weekend warrior stumbling in uh, early Saturday <laughs> to uh, to beat the crowds. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Set up a camera outside the local art shop. i will see if you can uh, get some footage. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all creepy or weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what it all boils down to. It's, yeah. It goes bad really, really fast when you try to <laughs> engineer these kind of things. So, but, I mean, we, we got the name of the uh, episode. I mean, it's uh, Maker Stalkers. <laughs> so, <laughs> you just go all in on that topic. <laughs> yeah. Who are you going to stalk in Sweden then, KJ? Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. I don't really have anyone to stalk here. At least not, no one close by that I know of. Yeah. So if anyone knows of a, a, a <laughs> nice uh, YouTube maker in the Stockholm area, I'm, I'm all ears. <laughs> it's, it's weird that the, the only... Th- ones I can think about are in driving distance of, I mean, of course, Stockholm is also in driving uh, distance to... Uh, but not, we're not talking but, American uh, driving distance here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for some reason, this part of... Everyone who, who becomes successful in this part of the country, they move to the States instead. So... Fair enough. Gives you... Who would you most like to stalk? <laughs> <laughs> when you put it like that. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't mind if Simon Jetsch still lived in Sweden. Uh, yeah, that, you could give her a good stalking. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that would be, so, it, it would be too weird, so it wouldn't happen, but yeah. <laughs> but it is a bit... That would be weird, I guess, because her entire online persona is, of course, uh, we we know she's Swedish, but everything she does is English. And then when you probably stumble over her and it's uh, like, uh, yeah, we, we can actually talk Swedish. And that, it's, it, it would just have been awkward at that point. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wasn't it uh, Rasmus Lewin who met her at Maker Camp and got to talk Scandinavian and they d- danced a bit and that sort of thing? That sounded really like a really nice interaction. <laughs> <laughs> Made me kind of jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you should, yeah, you should have more maker meetups or just friendly ones in Norway. It seems you've got a lot of makers there, actually, haven't you? A lot of our listeners are from Norway, for instance. Yeah, yeah I think that that would probably be a better approach than the stalking bit. You just make an event and invite people, and yeah, yeah. I mean, if <laughs> if half of them turns up, it's a win. Yeah, you're, you're you're much better at the the maker scene in Norway than than we are in Sweden, definitely. Uh, I don't know why, or if I just <laughs> happen to fall down on a Norwegian hole and can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't don't know why, but yeah, it seems to be that way. But we've got no excuses here. To be fair, we've only got Maker Central and you know, England is well. The the British Isles are quite close together. Really, it's quite small. 
quite easy. Yeah, I mean, you're a, a lot of people in a small area as well. We are, we have yeah. a, compared to the population size, we are quite spread out in Scandinavia. So, yeah. Yeah, but even even though if it's more compact area, it's it's still too many high profile so i mean if you have an event like mega central it's so big that you will have like this small individual groupings within maker central yeah. but at scopet festival and everyone who is there is basically at the same party because it's not too big <laughs> I'm just uh, playing with my pipe here, and I knocked. Uh... <laughs> I thought you were just going to make that ting sound after every sentence you made. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, since we're not paying for a subscription to Riverside, we don't have the the soundboards. I have to make my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why we don't pay for it. So we can't have a soundboard because we've tried that, and he plays with it too much. <laughs> I actually listened to that episode yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> You're weird. <laughs> no, I, I had my reasons, but I'm not going to tell you what they were. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but on that topic, uh, we need to circle back to Christmas. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. I have been, since the last episode, I've been playing around more with Udio, and I have been writing lyrics for a Hellquarter Christmas song. And of course, I've been pinging that off of video back and forth and i also got some output on lyrics that are really good that i've just implemented myself it's still a work in progress but i learned a few things um one of them is i i have a first verse that i think work i'm just gonna leave it and say that's in the bank um of course there there is a lot to go um and i'm halfway there on a refrain i think or chorus or i'm not sure when they use the various terms. Uh, But downloading the different tracks are off limits for the free version. I mean, it looks like it is there, but once you download all the tracks, they're just uh, small WAV files you're not allowed to open. And if you start reading in small prints, they say that this is on the paid subscription. So I'm thinking, should I get a paid subscription for a month? Because I need... The latest iteration I did last night actually spit out a good tune. And of course, that makes the process a lot more easier because if you have the tune, you know um, how to uh, to phrase the sentences and so on to make it rhyme and to hit the rhythm of the tune. So it makes also writing the lyrics a lot easier. So, uh, yeah, I'm on the verge of paying that uh, $10 a month subscription for a month or two um, to have that ability so yeah I think that's probably worth it in your case isn't it to get the the royalty free song that you can use it'd be yeah, probably worth it for $20 yeah and the, 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 the biggest thing I've been looking into is is there any uh, is it written somewhere that all right you go for a monthly subscription but you are tied for a month or something like that and it, it does it cost money to get out of it again? A bit like Adobe is now running and getting a lot of criticism for. So it seems too good to be true to just pay ten dollars to use it freely for a month and then just back out of it again. It's, it seems too easy. So uh, yeah, I need to read up a bit more. Yeah. That's a lot of music you could download in a month, isn't it? From that. Yeah, I could. Uh... I can pull Stop off an entire country and Western career on that time. <laughs> just, uh... That's where the big bucks are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I would, if I wanted to be a pop star, I mean, rock or heavy metal, it, it, that lifestyle doesn't resonate with me. And I, I think if you're not going all rock and roll and you just do the music, it's it's not going to be uh, all heart in it. So I think country and Western, I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. living on a farm, trucks, tractors, <laughs> and then music. Yeah. I think country and Western would be, uh, Norwegian be tractor metal. That's a <laughs> <laughs> sub genre to start. <laughs> all right. Google that afterwards. And, uh... <laughs> I could do the farm, the tractor and all that malarkey, but not the, not the country music. I'm afraid not my cup of tea at all. Yeah. I actually have a soft spot for country music for some reason. <laughs> Probably because I'm... I am from the countryside. 
of course, I, I'm bottle fed on that, but also the old school. Uh, so, of course, it hit hard when Chris Christopherson now passed away, also because it was a. While I was getting bottle fed the, the music through my parents, they also released Convoy, the movie, and that has etched <laughs> in, on my brain since I was a little kid. So, yeah, I don't care much for that. Uh, newer country music and it is a fascinating phenomenon here in Norway we have a lot of country and western artists and they're they're located <laughs> much of them in an area close to the Swedish border and you have that area on both sides of the border they they drive all American cars and they call themselves Norwegian and Sweden rednecks and of course from that those areas there was historically a lot of people emigrating to the states and of course now relatives of those are feeling the American lifestyle resonate a lot with them but that means that you now have a lot of country of Western artists there playing Western songs about the, the great American plains uh, riding on horseback and they're playing guitar sitting on the uh, on the lorry or the back bed of a, a truck that has never seen dirt or an American plane in its life and they're trying to pull off the un- <laughs> authenticity of it and it really falls on death air. So, yeah, but it's it's fun to watch. It's like a burning train wreck in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have a similar sound, the, the Norwegian um, music, the country music, or is it just a mile apart no it's uh, and that's the thing though i mean if it was tuned to something relatable to norwegian culture history and of course you could make it into your own but they're just <laughs> trying to make a blue copy of uh anything american and it's not i mean no we don't have those uh, parameters here so it just feels weird yeah <laughs> But I can understand that it it resonates to people. I mean, I, I've started watching Yellowstone, and uh, I'm into horses and farms now, although I'm, I basically hate horses and are afraid of them. But <laughs> So uh, there is something about the aesthetics of it, but, uh, you know, no, I'm, I'm not going to be, be a country artist. <laughs> I thought that was just me that felt that way about horses. <laughs> no, those are... I, I mean, they like they either. are they are <laughs> huge, frightened, stupid killing machines <laughs> that, that <laughs> might drop and kill you if someone breaks a twig. I mean, it's uh, yeah, we are living in some of the most densest uh, horse areas of Norway, and people are riding horses on the roads and so on, oh, and you, you get a nightmare. Yeah, no, of course I'm being polite, so I'm pulling over to the side and driving slowly, but you see those... I, I, I don't understand it. You have small girls or, and boys on those horses. They have... I mean, a, a grown adult can control a horse if it goes AWOL. And they are out there. They they can hardly get up on the horse by themselves, so they've gotten help to get on them, and they're riding by themselves. And <laughs> you have this... Uh, several hundred pounds animal that's easily scared off and i mean yeah <laughs> it's a good point well, isn't it actually i, I, I don't like them you wouldn't give a kid a, a bicycle that size would you <laughs> <laughs> no yeah but i mean ho- horse girls are the 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 coolest kids in that sense that they can just m- coolly control uh couple of hundred kilos of muscles that we grown men are afraid of and they just <laughs> smack it around and fix with it and and when they grow older they they learn to to drive big cars and can back with a trailer without problem because they want to transport a horse everywhere and so there <laughs> i think it's a good good breeding ground for a a badass yes. girl <laughs> for, for that few percentage that that carry on the hobby but i it's it's funny though because we are very close to it's it's not a race track but there is a competitive field something uh, and uh, of course uh, every uh, weekend through the so- summer there are tournaments and people are showing up from far and wide with their multi-million uh, horse uh, caravans rv uh, <laughs> yeah. things and 
Of course, I see the kids riding the horses back and forth, but they are just normal kids, so they're doing whatever normal kids do. So you see them riding past on their horses with their head in their phones. I mean, <laughs> isn't that some of the... Like, you're riding and uh, I remember my sister had a face where she was into horses and you had all these uh, weekly magazines for horse people and it's like they were always talking about the, the connectivity to the animal and the nature and uh, you can really just disconnect from the world and whatnot. And now they're sitting, like, staring into their phones. I mean... Why do, why do you do that on an expensive animal? Because that as well. Yeah. Uh, we have a... Uh, my wife have a friend that is into uh, breeding horses professionally. And the cost of keeping horses, even one horse, not even purebred, but just for like recreational use. I mean, they are expensive. That's... Yeah. I mean, if you are married to someone who's into horses, then you have the, all the alibi you need to get all the tools in the world because you're not <laughs> even going to get close to the cost of having a horse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, having a horse, isn't that like uh, owning a boat? It's like the the, the biggest <laughs> money pit you can have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if, at the smallest wave, it might, might sink and kill you. So yeah, <laughs> good comparison. <laughs> Imagine all that workshop time if your wife was into horses and spending all that much time with the horse. It'd be all right, wouldn't it? And then I said it would be great. But I felt like I was overregging it. Letting... <laughs> I just, just had to check myself. Michelle does listen. It wouldn't well, be great then... if you liked horses, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> but then, the, then there's the thing that, of course, uh, having kids, then, I mean, you don't get more free time. Uh, but you might end up living on a farm. So you had more space and a bigger workshop. So yeah, yeah, I see there are definitely positive aspects of owning a horse. So uh, yeah, I might be persuaded, of course. <laughs> I just need the right <laughs> incentive, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that might, be your, that might be your ticket to get back north, actually. Get the girls into horses. Yeah. I'm gonna... Look in other directions first. <laughs> yeah. There are other hobbies. Yeah, there are other hobbies. Uh, that uh, don't actively try to kill you. Uh, or yeah, in <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. What were your hobbies before making both of you? Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> uh, amateur theater. Um, creative writing. Uh, games. Uh, okay. Both uh, computer games and uh, tabletop games. Right. Played a lot of tabletop games before we got the kids. Um. Nice. Yeah, let's... Ooh. Um... I mean, I, I come from a small place, so so if you didn't play football, you could either do drugs, or yeah, you could do drugs. Uh, but I did find a. We've never ball. heard you talk about football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I found a loophole. So uh, in the early days, uh, me and a couple of friends, we did competitive shooting, um, and that ended parallel with my father starting a company and my mother also working there because they did not have time to drive me around and before you're 18 it's frowned upon to uh, to carry a rifle onto public transportation um, so <laughs> um, but then at that point I think the maker bit has start to uh, emerge a bit but yeah at that point it was just taking things together and making stuff that goes bam basically um now we call that topic uh, but what i <laughs> on saturday i was out with the four-year-old and uh, we went to a shopping center because we needed to get something and then of course we ended up in a toy store and to my pleasant surprise i found that they actually have these 
uh, gunpowder things for these uh, toy pistols. You can still buy that. Oh, of the course, caps. Now it's, um, yeah, but they're, they're still, <coughs> I mean, now they're ludicrously expensive and they cut down the sizes of them so you don't get as many in the package as well. But it is enough for me to revisit one of the firecrackers that we used to make as kids. <laughs> I was thinking... Is that going to be a YouTube video where I just revisit how we did it in the old days where we just used tape and uh, like a rubber band as a fuse? And so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I did not have much hobbies in that sense of the word. But of course, uh, uh, I did chip in at my father's and mother's uh, computer company and they, they built it. I mean, at that time, you just got the parts. So you had to build the computers from scratch. So, of course, building computers and playing computer games was a huge part of it, I think, from 10 until started college, basically, because then uh, I started using a computer as a tool for everything else. The computer wasn't the, the ho main hobby anymore. It's just a tool to do other stuff. And here we are today. <laughs> <laughs> what about, about you, Glenn? Glenn? I was um, mad keen in, on uh, fishing right up until last year. Hmm. I mean, whenever I could, I would go fishing. Hmm. I was a member of a, um, a carp fishing syndicate. <laughs> syndicate? Uh, yeah, syndicate. <laughs> That's yeah. what it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, um, to get on a, a good syndicate, it's a couple of years' wait. And you have to go along and make sure you get along with the owner and the uh, some of the other members, and then they charge you a lot of money to, for the privilege to join. Okay, yeah, that so sounds you... like a cult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you sure it so, wasn't a pyramid scheme that you get roped into? <laughs> yeah. No, so it's a, it was eight hundred quid a year just to fish that one lake. Hmm. Yeah. Holy crap! That's, uh... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, paying money for fishing, that's always seemed weird for me. But then again, I grew up on the seaside. So, I mean, fishing yeah. is free in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's the only fishing equipment I've not got is for sea fishing stuff, to be fair. But mm -hmm. uh, all the other disciplines I've got, fly fishing and barbell and all the even the species. Mm. Yeah. I think on, on my mother's side, of course... Uh... They have all been uh, fishermen uh, because they always, I mean, even if you had a farm, you had to do fishing to survive in the min winter. So <laughs> all, the entire lineage on that side are fishermen. And it's like, what? You fish recreationally? That's just something you do to get food because, of <laughs> course, so yeah. they, it, it's not even struck their mind that uh, they could get like a fishing pole and spend a couple of hours at a quiet lake. Why the fuck would I want to do that? So, <laughs> yeah, I did that a bit as a kid. And in Norway, uh, I think it's up until 16. It's You don't have to pay any fees to go fishing anywhere. Uh, so, of course, uh, that's the beauty thing of being a parent. As long as you have a kid with you, it's just, all right, but it's teaching the kids to fish. So you don't have to right. pay. But even so, the, the universal licenses are very cheap. Uh, so you only have some... Um, like salmon rivers where you have to talk to the owner of the land as well and then it starts to look a lot like the the syndicate model that you are i mean you have to pay a lot to be able to fish there so if you want to be guaranteed catching a salmon in this country on a nice stretch of river you're probably paying about two to three thousand pound a day yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I know that salmon is expensive in the <laughs> stores, but you get a lot of sushi for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Easily prepared and you actually get it with a drink. <laughs> you don't have to stand in your own uh, piss in the river, uh, freezing, <laughs> fishing, <laughs> getting white knuckled. <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah, I haven't never understood that. I, I've, I've never wanted to do anything that badly that like some people who are hiking for a couple of days through the wilderness just to stand in a river somewhere and fly fishing for a special kind of fish you know it's, yeah <laughs> yeah it, it it just seems like oh this is work and it's work and it's more work to do work <laughs> work 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 
where is the fun in all of this? I can't really see it. I think the uh, the carp. But if you can make a video yeah. out of it, I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> the carp fishing became a favourite because that was normally a weekend thing with your friends, mm. and the the camping gear for carp fishing is quite luxurious compared to regular camping. I mean, it's proper beds with memory foam mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> is that really camping or yeah. is that glamping <laughs> it's just it's just being comfortable <laughs> you know with winter suits cookers and all sorts i mean a van full of gear for one weekend <laughs> i mean i remember at before and at university uh, of course we had this uh what, what do you call it wilderness group or something so we spent the weekends uh hiking the mountains and getting drunk in the evenings and at, at, at some point you're not walking as much in the mountains anymore uh, and then it was actually my mother who tipped me because she's very much into um, canoeing uh, and then you don't have to move as much and if you take a, an average canoe you can load it to the brim and it still floats very well so you can bring a stove, you can bring your own firewood so you don't have to scavenge for some twigs here and there to get a little fire going and you can bring a bag of food and everything with you because you don't have to carry it on your back and we have done that now with a couple of friends uh, for a few times we go into the Swedish forest or something and just load a lot of equipment into canoes and just basically just drift with the current <laughs> drinking beer and then, oh, that looks like a nice place and you just make a fire and you put a kettle on and you just make stew and continue to drink beer and whiskey so it's uh that sounds yeah, like the, that the, sounds the glamping nice. life is yeah. really good <laughs> and not make... on any of those trip has anyone brought fishing gear <laughs> <laughs> You had a maker meetup, didn't you, KJ, in the woods once? I remember that yeah, right on, yeah, on an old uh, video of yours. Yeah, it was uh, Ola uh, at uh, Forty Drawers who ah, pulled okay. that together because his family had a house in the middle of nowhere, more or less. Um, so he uh, invited a lot of uh, makers. Uh, so, yeah, we had a nice little uh, meetup in the woods, so to say. Nice. And you're I, still here. That's good because you just described the plot of every early 2000s horror <laughs> movie. I mean, a yes. group of people going to a cabin in the woods. I mean, that's a box office <laughs> hit right there. It could <laughs> very well have been the start of a, of a horror movie. Yes, very much so. <laughs> but luckily, none of us were serial killers. Serial killers. And we, we had a lot of tools to do it uh, in very uh, elaborate ways as well so it could have been a great movie actually <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, so yeah, the table saw massacre it doesn't have the same ring to it but yeah just as scary <laughs> 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 I just envision waking up and someone standing over the bed with a table saw and just <laughs> throwing it down on the person on the bed. <laughs> yeah, but you should have those mini maker meetups more often, I think. Just invite people over for something. Because it's nice to just hang around with like-minded people. Well, yeah, you, and what you I, only I, do it in Sweden when a German comes over and invites you all together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, that's sad. That, I mean, we are. We, we. I mean, maybe that's the difference between Sweden and Norway that we're not that social, or we. <laughs> well, I, I, I was of the same. I mean, uh, that we're not that social, but then I saw this. Uh, I mean, the line of stories, uh, was it Stian who visited Martin just yeah. over the weekend and just like, what? He invited himself over to, an, uh, is that even possible? I mean, <laughs> Are I, you I mean, allowed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, hey, we're waiting for Scopper Festival and to be able to see other makers and people that you chat on. <laughs> Could I just invite myself? Could I just come to your <laughs> workshop one day and have a beer and then leave? Is that, yeah. 
It's a whole different world. You could come to the workshop, but you can't leave. <laughs> yeah. You have to sand this entire slab. I, I've got a friend now. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're going down computer. that... <laughs> If you're going down that route, I mean, it. I mean, I think a, a maker horror movie would be not a full blown splatter movie, but it would be more Deliverance. I mean, it's, it's the small airy <laughs> hints, it's the music, it's the it's the awkward quirks of the people you meet. You're not quite sure is he nice? Or what did he mean about that? What this is weird? Why is that there? What did that do? I mean, it would be that airy sense through the entire movie, and uh, yeah. Not too much happening, really, but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when you ha- when you have people who have built dungeons behind uh, hidden, uh, like bookshelves and so on, and who uh, told yeah, you? And it's and it's sound <laughs> insulated. Yeah, <laughs> like okay, that's that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, interesting, wasn't it, at Martin's house? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very much, <laughs> but uh, if I'm ever going there, I'm gonna I'm gonna let a lot of people know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> if I go missing, you know where to dig. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, the next time we see a behind the mistakes video, it's just Martin with a face mask. You, you scalp off your face and put it all over his, his own, and just impersonating you. <laughs> Yeah, and then it's the it's the Blair Witch all over again. I mean, I could film myself with a snotty nose, close up and shaking. <laughs> I don't know where I am. <laughs> you see, that's why you have a sign. So you think, see? <laughs> yeah. Is it glowing in the dark? <laughs> oh shit! I didn't think of that. <laughs> he was found dead bludgered under the exit sign <laughs> so close instruments. to freedom but so far yeah, <laughs> yeah any of your uh, stringed instruments have a sharp edge somewhere you, you could use it as an axe mm. well yeah the uh, the, the um, fire extinguisher one I could take the uh, the edging off that one that's pretty sharp underneath there yeah that'll probably work yeah It'll give you a nasty cut <laughs> <laughs> Self-defense. Uh. <laughs> yeah, the cigar box has got an oak stem. Yeah. And the other two are made out of teak. So they'll be good good for outside. Longevity outside. <laughs> <laughs> for those long battles. <laughs> yeah. I think the diddly bow you could actually, that could be a bow, couldn't it, for shooting arrows as well. That's only a single <laughs> string. Weaponizing oh, your music yeah. collection. That's, that's and a And then, of course, you could, you could make your own arrows, but you could also, with the bows for violins, they have horse here. So you could, of course, while you're shooting the arrows, they could then strum a string over the pickup so you could get this oh, yeah. sound from the, that would be cool ah. I like that idea I have an electric uh, crossbow and it plays music as well <laughs> Steve see if you can get a tune out of this <laughs> yeah that's well that would be a video <laughs> series you just make the more ludicrous instrument just to hand them over to Steve to see if <laughs> when does he have to just throw in the towel I can't play that mate <laughs> like when <laughs> that's when you're doing a double bow where one part is more or less a stringed instrument another one is for shooting arrows and having them working together you can hmm. quite easily do that yeah and i've seen these are these are small handheld harps the, yeah, those are basically built f- for that yeah you don't need an electric pickup don't you where the uh, arrow passes by even the, the feathers tickling it would make a noise wouldn't it Quite possibly. No, and then you could, uh, yeah, if you have some metal inserts on the arrows spaced differently, you could get different sounds for different yeah. arrows. Yes. I'm sure yeah. this will go uh, go down well with uh, D&D players thinking the battle bards and that sort of thing. <laughs> so, I'm sure there's an audience for this. 
Super. There we have your next build, Glenn. I don't, your I next don't musical know. instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do the musical thing. I don't know about Dungeons and Dragons, though. <laughs> you lost me when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good input, though. Make a video where you make something for Dungeons and Dragons, but don't research anything. <laughs> go, go on what you know now and what you yeah. think. And then <laughs> just... Uh, <laughs> I made a Dungeons and Dra- Dragons whatever, and then just go what the gut feeling says. And <laughs> I'll, I'll make you a dice tower. That's, that's the only thing I've heard about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they might I mean, be... Just, a- just watch the comments on the video. Just you bloody idiot! <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah, but they they might be a picky crowd as well because I did uh, the dice game uh, board thingy I made mm-hmm. one one of my crappier projects. I I put a D and D in the title, and that is one of my most downvoted video, if that's what you say. I think it's the one with the most dislikes on it. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's not much, but it's it's notable. So, yeah, <laughs> I think they might be a harsh uh, crowd. Yeah, but you, does YouTube know the difference between a, a like and a dislike? Does it go against you? I don't know. I mean, you see the percentage. Uh, yeah, you do. Uh, and I don't yeah, and know I, how I think uh, it's... what uh, what YouTube thinks. I mean, it's it's interaction, so it's yeah. It doesn't know the difference between a bad comment and a good comment, does it? No, oh. but a thumbs oh. up and a thumbs down—that's really clear what it means. <laughs> yeah. and I think it's it's a, a discrepancy between what people think or how it feels and what it was intended to. Because if you get a suggestion in your video feed, it's like I, I, I'm not into this, then you can give it a thumbs down, and the algorithm, of course knows that, all right, he's not interested in those kind of videos and it just avoids showing you those. But, I mean, then I don't see the point. Why should the owner of the video see the downvote? Because, I mean, if it's just to sort out the people who are not into that video, you, you're not interested in making videos for them either. So, it, I mean, then it would be beneficial for you. But seeing that thumbs down is like, all right, why did you just not click on the next video, but you take time to press thumbs down? So it's, <laughs> I don't see the full purpose of it really, but. I think somebody I know keeps giving me a thumbs down on my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you is it? <laughs> now we take turns. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's KJ's this week. <laughs> No, most of my shorts is, is generally a few likes, but there's always one thumbs down. <laughs> I'm sure that's somebody I know. <laughs> Someone holding the phone upside down, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> that would be one of the Australians. Yeah, yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's it. Oh, this is an Australian of like. Course. It's, it's, it's James. Oh, thanks, it's James. James. It's an Australian <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I'm going to think about. That's great. Oh. The Australian like. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> so, given I'm doing the edit, uh, we don't uh, need to overstay our welcome with the half pint. So, um, yeah. Do you have anything more on your list? Because I'm all out. We have covered Christmas, Batmobile, steering wheel, new videos. Not that quite was the previous sure. episodes. I, I don't know why I brought it up here. <laughs> Not quite sure why, but my list just contains the letter T this week. <laughs> so yeah, I'm all out. <laughs> mm, the question is, do you remember what it was about? <laughs> Got no idea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. So. If anyone knows, I, I tell guess Glenn. that's it. Then. Yeah. If anyone knows, let let Glenn in on the secret, and we'll pick it up next episode. Ooh, cliffhanger! Yeah. <laughs> it's even a cliffhanger for us. That's a, that's a nice thing to pull off. <laughs> so yeah, on that bombshell, we'll call it a night or a day or whatever, and uh, yeah, see you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.